but I want to visit with you today about a couple of issues that seem pretty constant across the board for all people and then bring in a third issue that's become current uh, in Christian circles and really even broader because of some of the pushback during this time. So the couple of issues that seem to be pretty important across the board to people are a sense of purpose in life. Having a sense of purpose and the other is having relationship or community. And even more vital is when a group of people or a number of people have a shared sense of purpose and the community or relationship interactions between those people help further the purpose, the sense of purpose and mission they have individually and as a group. And a while back we were looking at 1 Peter chapter 2 and over in verses 9 and 10, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In this verse and many others, we see the sense of purpose among God's people that when, though, when people have received Christ as Lord and Savior and come to faith in Him, repenting of sin and receiving Him as God come in the flesh, His death paying for our sin and Him rising from the dead to rise in victory and offer us victory over sin and offer us new life and have stepped into that relationship with God through repentance and faith in Him, that we together then have a, a collective sense of identity together as God's people being about God's purposes. Then I want to connect that with the idea of whether or not church is essential. And if you're watching this today and you're not a believer on Christ, but you're just curious, I'm going to have something to say also for you. So hang with me because what I want to do today is I want to look at the nature of church, the question of, of the importance of Christian contact, and just some, some possible action steps not health advice or legal advice as far as next steps, just some things to consider for five different groups of people. So it seems to me what we need to ask during these days when we are in this new kind of uh, sometimes active but distanced church, suspended church, uh, church not gathered, church online, which I kind of push back against that even really being church. But it, questions are, what of the Christian life can I do in isolation? And why is it important to have some kind of Christian togetherness? And togetherness is all throughout the New Testament, and even the Old Testament, it talks about God's people. There's a, a communal sense. Well, one of the pictures I think of is a campfire. And if you stack the wood right, that Air comes in through that, and as those logs begin to burn, that kindling ignites those logs. And as those, those sticks and logs begin to burn, if they're stacked right, really it, the fire feeds off of itself. But if you kick those logs separate from each other, they'll smolder out. And I see that as a good picture of being together as followers of Jesus versus being kicked apart and not having connection. As you study, I believe we find six functions through which the church achieves what God's called us to do. We, God calls us to seek and extend the reign and righteousness of God in our own lives and around us through being and making disciples, followers of Jesus, and church is a crucial part of that. And I don't just mean gathered worship and Sunday school. I mean the functions of a church, and those functions are corporate worship of God, prayer to God, teaching and learning the truths of Scripture and how to apply those in our lives. Practical needs ministry, Christian fellowship, and I don't just mean hanging out and shooting the breeze. I mean the kind of interaction that builds each other up in the faith, sharpens each other, and evangelism or sharing the good news about life in Jesus Christ with others. And those things, most of those things can be done in a sense individually, but there is throughout this New Testament a togetherness element of it, and I believe there are some things that happen when we do those things together that don't happen on our own. If we look elsewhere in the New Testament, we come across 
three more terms that are very much together terms. Edify. Edify means to build up. And we can do that in personal worship and prayer time with the Lord, but it's important to have relationships in Christ where we edify and are edified or built up to be more godly in Christ and more effective in our Christian walk. Speaking of more effective, the other word is equip. To equip, to train, to educate, to make us more excellent and sharpened at being able to walk with the Lord and serve the Lord and honor the Lord and point people to Christ. And then encourage, to spur on one another, to, to feed off of each other like that campfire. And those are all together kind of terms. And so I want to mention five different groups of people and make a couple of suggestions for, for something to think about and maybe some action to take. Again, not health advice or legal advice. The first group of people are the people that your church is meeting again, but you've gotten really used to doing church online. I want to suggest to you that church online is not the complete experience of church. And there's a verse in Hebrews that talks about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And I want to encourage you that if you're not scared of the virus and you just want to stay at home, to please be a part of Christian community. The second group of people I want to talk to today are folks like our folks here at Meadow Lane. We're still not meeting in person, and I think that's fine. We're in an at-risk age group, most of us. And most of our folks aren't comfortable coming back together. They're nervous about this virus. And, hey, you know, this video is not about making anybody feel bad or shamed or guilted into doing something that they're scared to do. But my request to you would be please think about how you can connect with other Christians in a safe way, whether it's online, whether it is uh, in phone calls, whether it's front porch or backyard visits so you can keep a safe space and open air. Whatever it is, though, to not get kicked out separate like those fire logs, but to, to have some Christian connection uh, in this time, in the meantime, where, we, where we're not doing it in a traditional way, where you have the edification, the equipping, and the encouragement in those six functions of the life of the church. A third group is what is called the Duns. Folks that you've been hurt by church, you've had a negative experience of church, you love Jesus, you believe in Jesus, but you just aren't church people. And I want to encourage you, please, to think through the fact that the Scripture paints a together-in-Christ kind of picture. And so to encourage you today to find a way to have Christian community for that edifying, equipping, and encouraging. Some kind of interpersonal connection that builds you and grows you in Christ. And in fact, recently I've wondered if part of my ministry doesn't need to be to the Duns. And so if you want to reach out to me about that kind of connection for encouragement and sharpening in Christ, I'd invite you to do that. The fourth group of people that I want to mention, and, and I told you earlier in this video, even if you're not yet in Christ, that there's some help for you here because you may have been wondering, hey, is there a higher identity and purpose and community? And yes, if you come to faith in Jesus Christ, you become part of God's covenant people with a new identity, being part of God's people, a new purpose, and although we get it wrong sometimes, ideally a new community, a new set of relationships that help you in that. And if you'd like to visit with me about that, I'd invite you to reach out. Fifth group of people is anybody with church connection. And I want to ask you please to look at your church, whether it's active right now or suspended, and I'm going to ask you to look at those, those activities, the edifying, the encouraging, and the equipping, and the six functions, the prayer, the worship, the fellowship, the teaching and learning, the ministry, the evangelism, and really evaluate your church as to whether or not those things are happening and what it would take for those functions to be carried out in some sort of together way because those are the functions of a church and if a group of Christians isn't doing that then really rightly speaking they're not a church and those functions are how the Lord has laid out for us to further his kingdom and make disciples and help each other do that thanks for watching thanks for chewing on these things and thinking about them with me and take care for now